This is Unit 6, Video 7. In the previous video, we talked about PV equals NRT, the utmost important equation for gases. A little P there. And here we're going to apply this equation to a few other parameters that we can measure uh, about gases. The first will be the density of gases. The density of gases can be determined uh, quite readily, quite easily, if we have this tool in our tool belt. And the way we do this is we realize that density is mass over volume. This should be general knowledge. So we're going to assume that we have one mole of our gas. Now we can actually assume any mole we want, but one makes it easy. And then since we know that one mole of the gas, if we know the density of the gas, has a certain amount of grams based on its molar mass from the periodic table, we can actually solve using PBNRT for volume. So solve for volume, and then we'll have moles, which gives us grams. We have volume from PVNRT, and that will get us the density. And that's how we're going to do this. All right, let's try it. What is the density of carbon dioxide gas at STP conditions? Just to remind you, standard temperature and pressure conditions are 0 degrees Celsius, which means 273 Kelvin, and 1 atmosphere. These are exact values, so they're not going to mess us up in our calculation. Now, carbon dioxide gas is CO2, which has a molar mass. If you calculate carbon dioxide's molar mass, it should be 44.01 grams per mole, which means that one mole equals 44.01 grams. The molar mass is uh, equals 40. This is just from the periodic table. So this is the data for carbon dioxide gas. All right, now we want to get the density. The density of any substance is the mass of that substance over the volume of that substance. Well, in our case, the mass is 44.01. We get the mass. And the volume can be determined readily using the ideal gas law. And the ideal gas law, PV equals NRT, remember, applies to ideal gases. This is the ideal gas law. which means that it applies to all gases equally. We assume that all gases behave the same. That's why we can apply the same equation to all gases, no matter the identity of the gas. And this really is the key. This equation has been the key to determining a lot of things about these compounds, a lot of properties of these uh, compounds, including the density. So let's do it. Volume, if we rearrange the equation, we get ourselves volume equals NRT over P. The R constant that we'll be using, uh, let's go ahead and use the R constant of 0 0.0821, like we've been doing. So our constant will be 0 0.08206 liters atmospheres, moles, and Kelvin, which means our units are actually already lined up. Looks like we have atmospheres. And uh, conveniently, STP is defined in atmospheres to help us out here. And then our temperature must be in Kelvin, which it is. And we have one mole of our gas. Let's go and plug the numbers in. So we have 1.0 moles. Our gas constant is 0.08, 206 liters atmospheres moles Kelvin. And I went ahead and I'm putting in the uh, units so you can see how they will cancel out. Our temperature is 273 Kelvin all over our pressure, which is simply one atmosphere. And as always, your units should cancel out to just give you what you're solving for. In this case, atmospheres cancels out, volume cancels out. Oh, volume does not cancel out. Volume is what we are solving for. There it is. You see? Uh-oh. That should be a liters. So liters stays, and that's what we want moles cancel out. And so does the temperature. So we got ourselves liters. That's what we want. So in this case, we're essentially multiplying 0 0.08206 by 273. Go ahead and do that. 273. And this gives us 22.4. Now this number here, 22.4 liters, 
we have seen before. Do you recognize this number here? This should be the molar volume of a gas. This is what's called the molar volume of a gas, which means this is the volume that one mole of any gas occupies, the 22.4 liters. This is actually a conversion factor, if you're under STP conditions, that is, for moles and volume, moles and liters. So what you can actually put down conversion factor between moles and liters, which is extremely important. All right, so now we can go ahead and uh, determine our, our density. Remember, we're going for the density of carbon dioxide gas. So our density then is mass, which is 4401. 44. One over my volume, which is 22.4. So this is grams, this is liters. Go ahead and plug this into uh, the calculator and see what we get. So 4401 divided by 22.4 gives us 1.96. Now let's see. Since we have exact numbers, we can actually go 965. We can have four uh, sig figs. Really, we're limited in our sig figs by R. Uh, R can be defined further out. The rest of these are, and we're also limited, I guess, by a molar mass. But here it is, 1.965 uh, grams per liter. Now, make sure it's grams per liter. And uh, gases are always expressed in grams per liter. So this is the density of gas. Notice we're able to determine the density of a gas using nothing but PV equals an RT. And that's pretty fascinating. So. We'll do a few of these example problems for your uh, educational enrichment. The second thing that PV energy can give us, and this is the last concept we'll talk about in this video, are molar masses. Now, molar mass is even more important to determine than a density of something. Molar mass allows you to identify a substance. If you know the molar mass of a gas is 44.01, well, you can then identify this as CO2 because molar mass is identify the connect they're connected to the, the chemical elements that compose the gas. Uh, this is also called molecular mass. And if you have a molecule like CO2, you can call it molecular mass. If you have uh, an ionic compound, you can just refer to it as molar mass. Now, molar mass is grams per mole. So you can say M over N. Uh, little m is for mass. Little n is for moles. Now, big M cursive is actually for molar mass. This has been used as the convention for molar mass. Now, it has to be in cursive because the non-cursive M actually means something else that we'll eventually discuss. So we can use the ideal gas law, PV equals NRT, equation to find the molar mass of a gas. What we'll do in this case is we will assume that we have a mole, uh, rather we're going to weigh it, we're going to we're going to weigh the, uh, the gas, and then we'll be able to uh, find the moles using PVNRT. So as you'll see, the, the problem here would be the moles on the previous equation, the density equation, we got the volume from PVNRT. In this case, we'll get the moles from PVNRT, and then that allows us to calculate molar mass. All right, so let's try it, and you'll see what we mean here when we do an example problem. A 250 milliliter flask was filled with a gas at 25 Celsius and 102 atm of pressure. If the mass of the gas is 0.459 grams, find the molar mass of the gas. So this is an experiment set up where you have yourself a flask, some sort of flask that's been filled with a gas. It's 250 mils in size. And we've measured the temperature, we've measured the pressure of the gas, and we've measured the mass. All three of these are pretty easy to do. And from that, we can actually determine the molar mass of this gas. Let's go for it. So the molar mass equation is mass over moles. So we'll do grams per mole, or we can say this is mass over mole. PBNRT we'll be using. Now, what we'll solve for in PBNRT would be for moles. The mass, the grams here we have. We have our, our mass for our molar mass, but the moles will essentially come from PV and RT. So if you can solve for moles, we can plug those in and actually get our molar mass. 
Now, in order to plug them in, let's see, we've got ourselves some constants and some uh, data to uh, deal with. Uh, we'll use the R constant 0.08 to 06 liters atmospheres moles Kelvin, which means our volume must be in liters. We have milliliters in this case, so we have to convert milliliters to liters. So our volume should be uh, 250 milliliters converted to liters. Remember, to convert to liters, you go from milliliters to liters. A liter is a thousand milliliters. You essentially divide by a thousand to get yourself 0 0.250 liters as your volume. In the case of temperature, we have to also convert to Kelvin. So our temperature should be 225 plus 273 to give us 290 8 Kelvin, so this is going to be our temperature, and our pressure is actually already given in the correct units. Our pressure is 1.02 atm atmospheres. Looks like we have the three variables necessary to determine the fourth, which is moles. So let's go ahead and solve for moles first. So in this case, moles would be rearranged. The equation PV and RT is rearranged to give us PV over RT. And our pressure then is 1.02 atm. Our volume is 0 0.250 liters. Our gas constant, as always, is 0.08 to 06 liters atmospheres moles Kelvin. And our temperature is 298 Kelvin. All right, let's go ahead and plug this into your calculator to see what you get. So we got 1.02 times 0.250 divided by 0 0.08206 and then divided by 298 which gives us a molar volume a molar value of 0 0.01043 uh, a few more numbers one more number usually than uh, what we're using to make sure we don't lose any significance in this case this is moles if you analyze the equation everything should cancel out but the moles all right so we've got the number of moles all we have to do now is apply, so this is our PV and our T uh, product, and we have to apply this equation to get the molar mass. So now the molar mass of the gas is grams over mole, our grams is 0.459 grams, our mole is 0.01043 moles, and let's divide the two numbers to get us, let's see, 0.4 Five nine over 0 0.01043. We should get ourselves 44.01. Would you look at that? 44.01. In this case, grams per mole. Now, do you recognize those gas? This is good old CO2 that we've just dealt with in the previous uh, example. This is just to show you that you can actually determine molar mass of carbon dioxide or any gas using this method. So very powerful and both of these methods were made possible by Pivnert, sometimes affectionately called Pivnert. So uh, feel free to uh, refer to PVNRT as Pivnert and be able to use it to solve for any variable relating to gases. We're going to wrap up with uh, an application of this and we're actually going to do uh, some labs involving this sort of method. Now what you could do, there's uh, an experiment called the Dumas method, make sure you pronounce that correctly, and it's used to determine the molar mass, or the molecular mass, of liquids, not of gases, but of liquids. And there are many, many liquids out there, and because any liquid can become a gas, we can actually apply PVNRT now to liquids, which is pretty fascinating. PVNRT can be applied to liquids. And the way you do it is you boil it, essentially. Uh, usually you begin with a liquid that boils below 100 Celsius, so that way you can use water to boil it. But you can use uh, other liquids that boil above 100, use other liquids to make them boil. What you do is you put the liquid in a bowl, so you put a little bit of a liquid down here, and then you stick it in a boiling water bath and let the uh, liquid essentially vaporize. Now as it vaporizes, it actually pushes out any air that's in there. And essentially, by the time the boiling is complete, you have this whole bowl filled with the vapor of that liquid. So no, no gases in there, it's only the vapor of that liquid.
then seal this, just kind of close it up. You can clamp it up, clamp it down, and then you take it out, and then this bowl will contain a little bit of a, a liquid that used to cover the whole inside. So now you can take the mass. You can actually go and weigh this, and you can determine the mass of this liquid. Well, since you know the mass of this liquid, and you've measured your parameters, pressure, temperature, and volume, you can actually determine via P of N or T how many moles you've got. And now you've got moles, you've got mass, you can determine mass over moles or grams per mole, and voila, you've got the identity of the liquid. At this point, we should give a round of applause uh, to the, uh, thank you, and we will actually use this method to determine the molar mass of a liquid. All right, so this wraps up video seven of uh, the units.